An inductor is an element whose terminal voltage is proportional to the time rate of change of current through the inductor. So voltage Vt is proportional to the time rate of change of current through the inductor and sometimes the same thing is written like this V proportional to di by dt. So in this case we are not representing that V and i are the functions of time t and it is self understood that they are the functions of time t. But here in this case we are representing that V is the function of time t and i is also the function of time t. And when we remove the proportionality sign we have Vt equal to L di t over dt and this form we call as the fifth the fifth form of Ohm's law and we have derived the other four forms of the Ohm's law in the earlier lectures the first form is j equal to sigma e this is the first form the second form is v equal to i r and the third form is i equal to g v and the fourth form is v equal to r dq by dt now we will have current i t from the fifth form i t will be equal to 1 over L integration from minus infinity to T voltage Vt dt and this form we call as the sixth form of the Ohm's law. Now we know the fact that an inductor stores the energy in the form of its magnetic field and when we have an ideal inductor then the power dissipated is equal to zero and therefore inductor will store the energy now we will calculate the total energy stored by an inductor and we know there is a close relation between energy and the work energy is the capacity of doing work if you are having some energy then you are promising that you will do some work in the future. So we will try to calculate the work and once we have the work we will have the total energy stored in an inductor. And we know work is equal to integration 0 to t power pt dt and we have derived that power is equal to voltage multiplied to the current. So in place of PT we can write VTIT. So we have integration from 0 to T VT multiplied to IT DT and VT is equal to L DIT by DT from the fifth form. So in place of VT we will write L DIT by DT so we have integration 0 to t l di t by dt and this i t dt i t dt so from here we are getting integration 0 to t l is constant we will take it out of integration and we are having integration of i t with respect to i t and therefore we will have the result of integration as i square t over 2 with the lower limit of integration as 0 and the upper limit as t. Now from here we are getting we are getting the work the work equal to 1 over 2 l inside the bracket i square t minus i square 0. So finally we are getting the work equal to half l i square 
t or we can write work equal to half l i square i'm not writing t with i because we know i is the function of time t so the energy stored in an inductor is equal to half l i square remember this formula and now in place of l i square we can write psi i why because we know we know we can write half l i square as half l i multiplied to i and we know psi is equal to l i so we are having half psi i and also in place of i we can write psi over l so we have half psi square over l so do remember these two results as well and i hope you now understand how to derive the energy stored in an inductor and the final result of derivation energy equal to half l i square this form is similar to the form of kinetic energy which is equal to half m v square m is the mass and v is the velocity here in place of m we are having l and in place of velocity we are having current i so try to remember this formula because it will be used in this course now i will end this lecture here see you in the next one